This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Treasure Coast. You're listening to WSTU Stewart. Well, a very pleasant good evening. Time now for Small Biz Florida with Tom Kindred. Thank you, sir, and welcome to another segment and installment of Small Biz Florida, the podcast and broadcast that's all things business across the Treasure Coast and the entire state of Florida. Small Biz Florida is brought to you by the Florida Small Business Development Center right here at Indian River State College. Our show is designed and produced to highlight and promote business assistance resources, celebrate entrepreneurial success, present best practices, and most importantly, provide timely business information for Florida small business owners and operators. I am Tom Kindred, and I serve as the Regional Director for the Florida SBDC at IRSC. I also like to always remind folks I spent 25 years in the trenches of small business and they were good memories, but uh, I'm glad I now get to spend time with Greg and and people like Ann Decker. Another five years in the trenches of this radio station. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it'll, yes. we'll be starting in our sixth year uh, in January. Greg, you... No, no. You add, hey. you add two, subtract no, five, no, no, five. No, no, no. There, uh-uh. There's no way we've been here six years. Yeah. There is. I don't... There is, yeah. I don't. I just don't believe you're you. here I for think, some of it. I know, yeah. I I think this. I think you count this radio show in dog years or something. I don't know. <laughs> ah, there's no way we've been doing this six years. No. I mean, Ann Decker's only been on twice. Yeah, yeah that's a, and that's been a problem too. <laughs> and she runs the college. I oh. yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Not quite. <laughs> Greg always, you know, Greg, Greg always asks me every, about every weekend, he says, when do we have an Ann back on? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it is a big night here, Greg, on uh, Small Biz Florida. We've yeah. got with us our very good friend, Miss Ann Decker, with the Indian River State College Foundation. Thought you were going to say the brains of the show, Katie Muldoon. Well, we've got our executive producer, Miss Katie Muldoon, too. So <laughs> Thanks, Greg. I've got to be on my best behavior tonight. <laughs> Uh, I've got two young ladies here that uh, I answer to. So anyway, <laughs> I have to be very careful tonight. I've got, in fact, this is the one I've got the whole thing scripted tonight. I'm not going to go off script tonight. And actually, you read that very well. <laughs> I'm not going off script tonight. But we've brought Ann in because she really wanted to talk about her background and pathway to the foundation. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to ask that question though tonight. But anyway, I am very happy to have Ann. Uh, you know, the other morning, I um, Ann probably won't mind me telling this, but Ann and I, there's a handful of us that get to the college a little early. <laughs> Ann, Ann even beats me there, but but um, we get there a little early. So every how now and again, early is early. I don't know how early Ann gets there. I, I'm there sometime around 6.15, 6.30. She probably beats me there. Um, really? Yeah, wow. I see her light on when I go by. <laughs> but so every once in a while, Ann and I have a conversation because uh, we can actually uh, talk and, and nobody's um, at the door. But anyway, I, I got an email the other day, and Ann was announcing that scholarships were going to open again for students. And, you know, I, I read that email, and I just immediately called Ann. I said, Ann, I just I cannot believe the great work that you do at the foundation to support these students. And I said, I, does, do people know about this? And Ann said, well, of course they do, Tom. So, But I said, you know what? I want to uh, do a show about these scholarships because, you know, what's amazing about Indian River State College and don't get me started, but what I love about Indian River State College is we are already so affordable, so convenient, uh, you know, five campuses. You know, if, if anybody, uh, you know, it, it wants to go, come and get that two or that four-year degree, it's there. And then on top of all that, 
you've got Ann Decker doing incredible work with her team at the foundation to provide scholarships. So, you know, it just, um, I just want to make sure people know all these opportunities out there. And I want parents to know. I want the students to know. So anyway, and that's why we had you on tonight. And, and we won't make you talk about your background or anything. We're going to talk scholarships. And that's Good. it. Good. Okay. So uh, let's talk about scholarships. Well, I haven't asked you a question yet. Okay, well, ask me a my, question. <laughs> we're following my script first. Hold on now. <laughs> Hold on. Tom, you're digging a hole. I know. Just real quick. I, I got to get a couple things out of the way. We've also got with us tonight our executive producer, Katie Muldoon, and our marketing specialist from the SBDC. So, Katie, you probably won't. We, we probably won't need much of, of, of you or uh, input tonight. I'm just here to watch you. That's make right. Make sure you're on script. Real quickly, I just want to remind everybody before we get started, just a couple of quick items. Remember, the St. Lucie County uh, Small Business Grant Program is still out there, still open, still money available. If you are a small business owner, I encourage you to um, go to stlucierecovers.org. Is that right, Katie? Um, and see if you are eligible for the grants. Uh, there's still money available, and to the best of our knowledge, that money's going to run through December, uh, the end of December. So you've got time. All right. Uh, it, the money's also available in Indian River County. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, uh, that grant is still open. We're still there. We're still working with small businesses. So that is still open. There is still money available in Indian River County. Um, we are putting together uh, what is called the Ice House Entrepreneurship Program for the Lincoln Park area. I would encourage folks that uh, live in and around Lincoln Park, Fort Pierce. Uh, it, this is an incredibly innovative entrepreneurship training program. We're going to conduct it over at the Blackburn Center. Uh, if you are considering opening up a business, or you've had some you know, entrepreneurial thoughts, uh, it's a great program. You can go to that irscbiz.com. Uh, site, click on that events calendar icon up there and find the Ice House registration, or you can simply call us at 336 6285 and Katie will get you connected to where you need to be. And the final thing I just want to remind everybody is, and I'll put it up there for the camera, there it is. The latest edition <laughs> of Treasure Coast Business is out. Uh, I would encourage you to get your copy, and uh, if, as I always, it's my, uh, it's my guarantee. Uh, if you need a copy, I'll just I'll bring you one. Uh, so call us if you want a copy of it. It's a great addition, great issue. And um, the two previous issues, if you can find one of those, they were also very good issues. They had actually uh, sections uh, in the middle of the magazine that had all, an awful lot of um, information about, uh, you know, small business uh, assistance and resource programs uh, through COVID. So are so you that, still giving out your wife's cell number? So. Yes, Somebody you can call my wife anytime, and uh, she'll she'll <laughs> and make sure that you get a magazine. It. And you'll deliver <laughs> it. So we've got some other things we're going to talk about, but we're going to save those till the end because I want to get to Miss Decker because uh, it is so important that we. I just want to make sure people know what's going on. So, and we're going to start right in the beginning. I mean, just again, just not not any background, but just tell us a little bit about the foundation itself and kind of what the purpose and mission of the foundation is. The foundation at Indian River State College has one mission and one mission only, and that is to support the college and its students. There are many wonderful organizations in town, Boys and Girls Club, United Way, Habitat for Humanity, the Food Bank. That's not my mission. My mission is to make the dreams and realities of students come alive, uh, to support faculty, support uh, buildings. Uh, we will be kicking, we are kicking off a capital campaign for our advanced workforce training complex, a very much needed building, our building that currently houses the trades on main campus literally is 55 years old the floor is sinking most people don't know that the site that the college is on was the dump it was donated to the college and uh, i didn't know that well yeah. you have to be a local greg to know oh, that. Yeah. and okay. uh this the thought was back in the 50s and 60s that no one would go that far west of town so <laughs> The land could right. be used, so it was donated, and to this day, we only have one dress code, and that is you must wear shoes because glass continues to permeate up through 
the ground and they don't want you to cut your foot. Whoa. Yeah. So the old building literally is falling apart. It cannot be rehabbed. We tried to get the state to allow us to rehab it. We had to do an engineering study on it 10, eight, eight, 10 years ago, and they said, nope, it's not worth rehabbing. you got to tear it down. You've got to build a new building. So that's one thing that we're doing. The foundation needs to raise approximately $10 million because the state has not come through uh, with their portion of the funding. We do have uh, $11 million from the state, but the building is going to cost over 20 some million dollars to build. And so we'll be launching that capital campaign uh, very heavily in January. So if anybody, I'll come over to you. Tom will deliver the magazine to you. I'll come over and pick up a check. So let's just make it simple. Well, he, and you we, can run the ads on all carpool. of our stations here. And yeah. We can carpool. But the other reason that uh, we want to be here tonight is to talk about the scholarships that are available. Again, Tom gives the credit to me and to the foundation, and it's not to my credit or the college at all. It is to the community and the private donors. Last year, we were blessed with $3.5 million that we're able to disperse to students. And it doesn't necessarily mean that they have to be in horrible financial need. The donor gets to decide who can benefit from their scholarship. They just may want to help somebody who's getting a teaching degree, an education degree, uh, a business degree, a certificate in welding, in automotive, someone who wants a biology degree, somebody who wants to transfer, somebody who just wants to get an education. So we are very, very blessed. I will say one of the things that I work very, very hard on is to endow scholarships. And what that means is, is that that scholarship would be in place in perpetuity. Whatever the endowment is, let's say it's a $50,000 uh, gift to endow a scholarship in Tom Kindred's name for, for the business department. We would allocate 5% of that $50,000, which is $2,500 annually, in perpetuity forevermore. The IRSC Foundation does not charge a management fee. Uh, our previous president, Dr. Ed Massey, said, as long as I am president, we are not going to charge a management fee to anybody to handle their scholarship. I have had this conversation with our new president, Dr. Moore, and he concurs the money should go to the students. So I'm excited to know that Dr. Moore is uh, a following uh, in that edict, so it's exciting. So again, um, the scholarships, uh, I am here to tell you the scholarship application is online, irscfoundation.org. You go right to the site apply for scholarships, and I am going to advise the applicants. I am going to strongly advise you, this is, pretend this is a job interview, because we will have anywhere between 3,000 and 7,000 applications. We do not have the manpower to interview 3,000 to 7,000 students. We will be interviewing the applications. So what you put on that application is vital. You're applying, I assume, because you need money to go to college. Well, why should I give money to Tom Kindred when Katie needs the money equally as well? So what is going to separate Katie getting that scholarship from Tom getting that scholarship is the information she puts on that application, and in particular, the essay question. Why do you need this what program, what difficulties have you had in securing your education? That is going to separate you from, I need the money. Now, I will also tell you the great thing about the application. It is not quickly done. You are going to invest an hour of your time or more. You can go back into the system. But once you fill out one application, it will automatically apply you to any potential scholarship you may be eligible for. We have over 300 different scholarships that have been established. Wow. Some of them help one, some of them help 10. I have a couple that help 100. So again, what you put on that application will automatically 
auto apply. And let me just take nursing. We have many different nursing scholarships. And if you're telling me you are going to become a nurse, of course, it's going to automatically apply you to different scholarships. What happens in the end when the scholarship period closes is that we will then compare. Maybe you are also eligible for some federal financial aid, also known as Pell Grant money, and you're getting $3,000 from the Pell Grant, and you have automatically been applied to seven different scholarships. And there may be 200 applicants for nursing scholarships, all seven of them. I'm going to see who gets some federal financial aid before I say, oh, here's a scholarship for Katie for 3000 when Tom is also applying for a nursing scholarship, but Tom is not eligible for federal financial aid, but he needs the money just as badly. So I may give Tom a $2,500 scholarship and give Katie a $1,000 scholarship. So again, uh, I'm going to use the words by a colleague of mine, Julia Keenan, when most people want to point, click, and be eligible for something. You're not going to point, click, and be eligible for a scholarship. You're going to have to invest the time. And one of the things that Julia has said, which I am stealing her words, is how many of you would like to make $500 an hour? Most people will raise their hand. If I say to you, how many of you'd like to make $1,000 an hour? Oh, you'll raise your hand even higher. Well, how about $3,000? Oh, your hand goes to the ceiling. Well, that's what you could receive if you invest an hour of your time in a scholarship. So that is vital. It's important. And just think of that application as your interview. How about if Tom and I both apply? <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, we're going to exclude Tom. Yeah. Yeah. And I would just right. like to add on to that, too. As an IRSC student who has received scholarships, I was in that situation. I do not get financial aid, but I've had foundation scholarships, and Julia has helped me. I love Julia. Shout out to her in the uh, past. So thank you, guys, and thank you, the community. I have been a recipient of those, so I've seen it firsthand. Nice. Yeah, Our job is to talk to the community and to the donors when they're talking about a scholarship. Um, because what I try to tell donors is, is that you want to make it technically as generic as you can, a health science program, which could be nursing, phlebotomy, radiology, um, EMTs, uh, a variety. And so if, if they will allow me to health science, it broadens the base and it broadens the scope. You know, there are people that will say, I only want to help an Okeechobee County nursing student. Terrific. We can do that. But maybe there are four applicants from Okeechobee County, and there probably are more, but I'm just using that as an example. But there may be 100 from St. Lucie County. And if your goal is to really help a nursing student, let's just say a student who's applied to the health science program. So, right. you know. I would just want to go back to the endowment because I just uh, and I want to understand the connection between the endowment because I just I think it's such a great idea. You know, my mother was a nurse for 40 years and I can't think of a better way to maybe honor my mother than creating a scholarship in her name for nursing students or healthcare students. Is that the way that endowment works? That's that exactly the way it uh -huh. works. And again, at Indian River State College Foundation, our minimum is $10,000. If you were to get that scholarship, if you were to establish that, and I'm going to use the University of Florida, which I know you're a big gator, That's right. it, that endowment would start at 150000 and Good they charge Lord. a fee. And again, Whoa. I understand overhead, but they charge a 1% fee, and then 4% of that endowment would be allocated. But you cannot even establish a scholarship at the University of Florida unless it's 150000 So when you establish a scholarship in your mother's name, you will start at Indian River State College. That's right. Of course, yes. And what I like to tell people is you can start at 10000 and you can add to it. You can add it as a Christmas gift. You can add it as a, uh, you know, a, a gift from your IRA. Let me send another 2000 to that scholarship. And I can use myself as an example. My husband and I took three years to establish 
a $10,000 endowed scholarship in our name to help any student going to Indian River State College. It's the Decker Lions Scholarship. Well, every year, instead of giving each other Christmas gifts, we make a donation to the foundation to add to that scholarship. That is cool. When people say, oh, Ann, I want to buy you a birthday gift, I don't need anything. Write a check to the IRSC Foundation designated to the Decker Lions Scholarship. My staff, I love my staff. I don't need a Christmas gift. Give a $10 check to the IRSC Foundation to the Decker Lions Scholarship and just keep adding to it. And I also... My husband and I have added it to our estate plans that when we pass, part of our estate, a percentage of our estate, will go to that scholarship in perpetuity. Again, there's a minimum of $10,000. There is no maximum. I have one scholarship that has a $5 million balance. Wow. Wow. And so you know what that pays out. 5%. Of a $5 million endowed scholarship pays out $250,000 a year. So. Wow. Yeah. And I didn't, and again, I just, and I, so, so I now understand you, you can actually come to the foundation at IRSC and create a scholarship in the name of your mother or your father or your grandparents for just $10,000. Exactly. And, and 4% of that 10 would go out every year. 5%. I mean, 5% of the 10 would go out every year to help a student. Yes, in perpetuity. Forever. Forever. Even, forever. E- even after you retire in 30 years. It, it is. I mean, again, <laughs> I have one scholarship that mm-hmm. has been there for 45 years. Wow. Yeah. And again, what again? What I try to tell people, and they say, oh, I want to give you $5,000 to give out. And, and trust me, I, I can give that out. It will be spent. But I always say... May I hold the 5000 and next year will you add 5000 to it so it's in doubt, so it's here forever, right. so it's here for, and then keep adding to it. Or give me 5000 to start the scholarship to endow it. Give me another five, I'll pass it out. And then add five, you know. Right. Or give me some from your IRA if you're over <clears throat> 70 and a half. And, 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 and students are going to know. They're going to know that they received the Ann, Ann Decker, Decker right. scholarship, and and uh, it's it's. A, I, I I can't think of a better way to it's honor your parents idea. or your loved ones. Right. I'm sure Katie will. Maybe she doesn't recall now, even though she's sitting here. Uh, if you've gotten scholarships from the foundation, you know it came from different people. You yeah. know. It came from different organizations. Right. It came from different people. Um, and it is, again, if I always say if, if each one of us can help one, we don't have to save the world. Right. But if we can in our own communities, we know that education is the hope and opportunity to get you out of where you are into greater opportunities. It's not going to get you a job. It's not going to. But it's going to give you that opportunity Absolutely. to get some skill <laughs> or some degree that gives you an opportunity to get an interview for a job. And right. that's what we try to do. Right. Well, and, and the whole reason, again, we, we kind of came together tonight was because it just, it, when I saw that email about scholarships had opened and, and uh, I, I put the, the whole affordability of Indian River State College together and then, wow, we've got scholarships. I mean, students from the Treasure Coast, young people. Well, you know, it's not even for young people. It's maybe it's for, for some, anybody. It's There's for anybody no age that, limit. That can go back, go back, uh, you know, to, to get an education, to get the degree, to, to get a better job, to get a promotion. I mean, that's what this is all about. And we really, along the Treasure Coast, we are just some lucky people to have IRSC here. Affordable, convenient, and with support like our community and the foundation well i will tell you uh, in the last year i had a gentleman who called me and wanted to meet with me and he's a princeton grad and uh print and as an alum of princeton they had and he's done very well in his life and uh you know what it costs to go to princeton 60 to eighty thousand dollars a year <laughs> and he's like this is ridiculous and so i will just tell you he wrote a check for a hundred and fifty thousand dollars to endow a scholarship he said that $150,000 at Indian River State College oh. will help more students than I could ever help at Princeton. Princeton is overpriced. I know the kind of education they're going to get here at Indian River State College because he's been watching us for two to four years before he made the gift. And he said, 
I want my money to go here. And well, I said, and I'm happy. That's to take great. It. Yeah. Wow, what a. And story. I've always used the example too. I two children, both have gone to school. Uh, both did it a little differently. Uh, daughter, which I don't blame her, you know, she was ready, wanted to leave and, and you know, go out on her own. And that was perfectly fine. Had yeah, no I've been with that. you for five years. I can get that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, son, uh, son, of, of course, wanted to uh, go to the University of Florida. And I sort of told him, I said, look, your, your quickest, most efficient pathway to the University of Florida is through Indian River State College. And and uh, went with him like every step of the way to and watched it and um, didn't get involved but watched it and IRSC just did such a great job of making sure that he took the right classes that he was ready for transfer to University of Florida and I'm telling you when he finished here I, I thought the University of Florida was going to send a plane or a car after him yeah. I mean, they said welcome yeah uh, I mean he went right into the University of Florida which is a a tough place to get into and did very well at University of Florida which I think is a a testament to the education he got uh, with his two-year degree at IRSC so I let me tell you um, it, it's just it's a it's a great pathway to either get the degree or to transfer yeah exactly and, and you've got some transfer scholarships yes, we do we have individuals uh, uh, particularly they are deceased now uh, but when Indian River State Indian River Community College only had the two-year programs they wanted to give that step up for someone who is going to transfer to another school another university to get their bachelor's degree as we all know we offer 17 18 different baccalaureate degrees but I absolutely have transfer scholarships I do want to tell you that our application period that opened on November the 1st which was Sunday it will close January 31st, except for health science programs. Uh, at our health science programs, you have to be accepted into the program. You have to do a background. You have to do the drug testing and all of that to be admitted into our, our health science scholarships will be available through June the 15th. So always, always make sure your scholarship application is updated. All right. Yes. Good advice. Great info. Yeah. So let's talk about, too, because you also engage uh, in support of faculty and institutional support. Talk a little bit about the, the, the faculty support. Well, uh, first of all, as the, as the college support, we talked about the Advanced Workforce Training Complex. Again, we have done multiple campaigns for the college. Uh, in the 14 years that I have been as the executive director of the foundation, we have built 13 buildings. Wow. Yes. So it's been a busy place. It has been a busy place. Now, again, the, anyway, uh, for faculty support, we have 13 different programs called the Endowed Teaching Chair. And this is a program in which a donor provides the funds and the faculty member applies for an Endowed Teaching Chair. Again, depending on when the donation came in, they are staggered. The the way we do it at Indian River State College, it has to be something that probably the college is not doing. Maybe it will enhance a program. Maybe they're going to try something new that, you know, the college doesn't have the funding. They just want to try something different. If selected, because previous uh, uh, endowed teaching chair recipient faculty and deans uh, decide who is going to, and then it's approved by the president of the college and his cabinet. If you are selected for an endowed teaching chair, it's for three years. And Tom, let's pretend you're faculty member kindred, you apply for an endowed teaching chair and it is awarded to you in business, let's just say. So you would receive each year for three years, $4,000 or a total of $12,000 to implement your project. It doesn't matter what it is. You would have put a proposal together in your application. But you also will receive a $2,000 stipend in your check in August when the academic year starts. So, again, the individual re the individual faculty member will receive 6000 and then 12000 to implement their program. And let's use an example of a nursing faculty decided to do a gerontology and went out into the community and said, 
nursing is a specialty. Gerontology nursing is even a specialty of nursing. And went out and trained doctor's offices in the specialties of gerontology nursing. And one of the things that that faculty member bought with the $4,000 per year that they had to spend was a, um, a dummy uh, that had the ability to reflect uh, heart failure, um, lung failure, dementia. The, the patient wouldn't respond if you said, open your mouth. The patient would turn their head because they didn't understand the instructions. So that was very helpful tool in training. Um, we have had a variety of things. Well, I, I think of the, the financial literacy program. Yes. God, yes. what an incredible program that was. Packed house. Yeah, packed house. Yeah, Dr. Maria Solomon Davis yeah. has done that absolutely incredible program that yeah. she's done with that. And again, we have some of them are open. Some of them, again, the donor had sort of directed, you know, health care, right. business, um, they're open. We try again to encourage them. I try to tell donors, I know what the needs are today, but this is in perpetuity. I don't know what 20 years from now the community and education is going to need. I would prefer if you would just allow it to be open, but that's not always the case. Uh, again, as you know, there's a business one, there's a health science one, Good. you know. And, uh, again, part of what you're responsible for in the foundation is, of course, alumni relations. You've got an alumni director. Talk just a little bit about alumni and, and why is it important that we stay connected to the, to the folks that have gone through IRS? Well, I'm kind of selfish uh, in the sense that I want alumni to pay it forward. I want them, if they receive something, whether it's a great education and a scholarship, I want them back connected to the college. I believe, again, as I said earlier, if we can all each help one. So if Katie received a scholarship, I hope that when Katie goes out into the business world, she is going to turn around and either actively be involved in a Rotary Club, a Kiwanis Club, whatever, that helps raise money for scholarships, or she as well begins to contribute and give back to a student who also might need it. And I am telling you, there are many times that a $500 check makes a difference between buying books and not buying books. It right. may be a small scholarship, but it makes all the difference Absolutely. in the world. Absolutely. And, and so, uh, again, another very unique program that's, that's under the foundation umbrella is the Lifelong Learning Program. Uh, Melissa DePriest, incredible uh, individual, does a great job. Talk a little bit about lifelong learners. Uh, the Field and Institute for Lifelong Learning has been named by a, a woman who was in education all of her life. She has a Ph.D. in paramutual statistics, was the department chair at uh, the University of Alabama, and came here and saw that uh, the students here can get a bigger bang for their buck. And then when her husband died, who was also a PhD in business, uh, she named the Field and Institute. And this is really about a health club for the brain for 50 and older. But I will tell you, our average age is 74. And we have seven. <laughs> Notice she's looking at me when she says that. <laughs> we have 700 different people that are involved and 75 different peer leaders, all who volunteer their time. Wow. Such things as computer training, how to use your iPhone, how to do how to store photos, how to be on social media safely, how to write your memoirs. Uh, we have a class that Dr. Fielden leads, Dr. Jean Fielden's. It's called Adaptations of Novels and Films. She takes books that have been made into movies. She assigns the books for reading. They come together in a class and they watch the movie. And then they discuss, did it follow the book? Did you like the book? Did you like the movie? Did you like how they adapted the movie to the book? It is a very popular class. Now this fall, we've been doing our classes via Zoom. So there's been special training. We had to invest in special equipment. We had to do a lot of peer training, but our peer leaders wanna come back just like our students wanna come back. So we have selected classrooms that we can social distance with masks. And again, we have 700 different members in uh, the four counties that we serve. 
Um, one of the fun things, uh, and this is what our members have told us, they want to take trips. So we have taken trips to California. We have taken <laughs> trips to Washington, D.C. Melissa led a class last year to Ireland, and I just want to let you know that whatever happens on these trips stays on these trips. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently Las that's Las Vegas fun. is coming up. Yeah. Right. Uh, next year, I was supposed to lead a trip to Sicily and southern Italy in October. And, of course, because of COVID, that was canceled. We've rescheduled it for uh, September of 2021. Uh, we had 44 people going with us this wow. year. Wow. And uh, so, uh, nice. again, uh, but it is, it is interesting to see in our lifelong learning program how much COVID has affected their mental well-being. They want to come together for the social interaction and for the brain stimulation. Uh, I didn't realize how much the social interaction meant to them until they couldn't come together. They come together, they debate books, they d do pottery, they learn mahjong, whatever. But then they go to lunch yeah. or they go to the movies <laughs> or whatever. So, um, But it is a wonderful program. And I yeah. will tell you, here's another instance of giving back. These individuals are setting up scholarship. These individuals are mentoring our Take Stock and Children scholarship recipients. These individuals are including the college in their estate plans to benefit future students. So um, yeah. it's a win-win. So in the second semester then, are there going to be live Live sessions? classes, yes. Great. Yes, yes. Good stuff. Yeah, again, we are going to require, regardless of what the state of Florida does or the governors or government does, uh, because of that population, we are going to require that they wear masks. We have the rooms that will be set up to be socially distant. Um, so uh, come on down is what I say. Um, another very innovative program that was really created at Indian River State College by one of uh, a very generous donor. Uh, an entrepreneur up in up in the Indian River County area, uh, an annual event you call it the Entrepreneur of the Year event. I think you just in the last couple of years celebrated the fifteenth or the twentieth. Twenty first. Twenty first. Just did twenty first. Okay. Um, talk uh, briefly about that Entrepreneur of the Year event. Incredible event. Well, we look for an individual who has started a business and expanded it, um, and has done incredible things and entrepreneurs nominate other entrepreneurs and uh, everybody in the community hopefully knows Scott Deal from Maverick Boats. Uh, Scott started from nothing, took all the risks and I think the biggest lesson that I've learned um, is that failure is just part of the learning process for entrepreneurs. It's not failure, it's just oh well that didn't work, let me try something else. Right. And I will use Don Proctor from Proctor Construction. When he wanted to buy a development, when he was early in his construction period, and we're talking back in the 70s, he could not find a bank that would loan him money. So he read the Wall Street Journal to find out what a leverage buyout would be, and then went to not one bank, not two banks, not 12. <laughs> now keep in mind we're talking the 70s. He went to 37 different banks before somebody would say yes. Now, I'm in the... Now, they weren't all in this area. No, no, because... I was going to say. Of course not, because look, in the 70s, we yeah. didn't have that oh, many. Yeah. Now, I've told Don that may be a curse that he put on me because I used to, when I would reach out to potential donors, I would contact them seven times. Well, my number has now went to 37. <laughs> so if I've called you well, that, seven times and right. you've told me no, I, well, you're going to get 30 more calls uh, from me. You, take that as a warning out there. Yeah, if you, yeah. yeah it's 37 is the number. So, again, uh, we honor these entrepreneurs and uh, what they've done and what they have achieved. And it has been a real inspiration, I think, to those of us who work at the college. Tom, I know you've been yeah. there. What these folks have done, how they've created businesses <laughs> Uh, when you look at Bob Stork, our Entrepreneur of the Year mm -hmm. for 2021, he worked, he and his partner worked for five years without income, and their wives supported them so they could get their business off the ground. Now, I think I'm a pretty supportive wife. <laughs> My husband didn't work for five years and didn't bring home a paycheck. That would be that would be tough. I've been know. doing that for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> 
So it is a wonderful program. Uh, we have already delayed the award ceremony for 2021. Uh, until September, we normally do it sometime yeah. February, March. Wow. But we're just concerned because uh, you know the room is always packed yeah. uh, with 200 people, and we just think we need to be a little cautious. So I've met yep. with Dr. Moore, and he's agreed we should delay it until uh, later in the year, and hopefully we'll have a vaccine and folks will feel more comfortable coming okay. out. Because it is it is a great event, and uh, and you're so right. And I I've been um, privileged to to be a part of it for the last four or five years, and. And it, it, what what I always am shocked by is the entrepreneurs that live among us. Yeah. Uh, and that you don't you, you don't know you don't know the story. You don't know. You just the story. think maybe ah that's they just started that way. But to hear the backstory is is impressive. And their um, vision and the struggles right. that they were willing to do right. to get to the other side. Um, it's well, just and I and you you mentioned Scott Deal, and I'll never forget what he said the night. Uh, he received the award. He, he talked about, he said, I, did, I didn't really know I was an entrepreneur. I was just getting on a bus for the ride. I mean, that's how he described it. You know, you know I just thought it was like getting on a bus and, you know, I just thought I'd go along for the ride. Yeah. He said, I didn't really realize that I was an entrepreneur. I didn't really realize that I was doing all these things that, that entrepreneurs do. But, but yeah, that one was uh, pretty funny. But, um, yeah. but anyway, it has been impressive uh, with the, with the folks that I've been able to go see and, and listen to. So, um, and I do want to kind of, as we, as we come to a close here with Ann, very quickly, you've already mentioned it, but I do want to talk just uh, briefly, just a couple of minutes about, we are going to, uh, have the groundbreaking is set for December the 4th for the new, uh, advanced workforce training complex. And you, you mentioned and talked about it, but uh, again, it is, I mean, we really have kind of come full circle maybe in education and and now we're we're going back to a building that's really going to be focused on you know industrial arts and well and, and again uh, you talk to anybody who is in the trades and they cannot get people to come and right. work for them that have any training um and they are desperate to have folks who have some air conditioning now keep in right. mind today there is nothing that is done that doesn't need technology i mean it isn't Everything is computers. I was talking to a gentleman today who said that there was a survey needed to be done, and a gentleman came out with a backpack, a GPS machine on his back, and he was walking the ground while this machine, this computer, is on his back uh, laying out the groundwork through the GPS, and he's printing out to make sure. And I'm like, oh, my God. Amazing. You know, <laughs> again. So right. this is advanced workforce. Right. Again, you know, we all have cars. You're like, what went out wrong now? <laughs> well, you don't yeah. have cars anymore. You have computers. Yeah, yeah. With exactly. Wheels. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So, That's again, great. December the 4th, uh, 1 p.m., uh, right there on the main campus, going to have a groundbreaking open to the public, uh, but but incredible uh, opportunity for the entire region. Um and uh, Dr. Moore, our new president, very entrepreneurial, uh, you know, mind and thinking. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, looking forward to, to, to getting this building launched because, again, going to be a big part of the, of the region's uh, economic growth. So, again, as we kind of close in here, I just, um, I, I, you know, I was looking at your, your website, uh, just doing a little reading, a little research before our, our interview tonight. And I noticed on your website, you had a, you had a great quote. Uh, it's by um, Sir Winston Churchill. And it says, we make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. And uh, really great words. And, and I, 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 again, uh, you know, so appropriate to be on your website, because all the things you're doing, and you said it at the top of the broadcast here, you, you know, we give you and your staff credit, but really all the things that you're doing are made possible by those who give. Exactly, exactly. And the generosity of strangers to help a student, it is just incredible. And uh, it is just amazing to me when, like, this gentleman from Princeton comes in and says, I want to give my money here. It's going to go further. Right. You guys are right where the rubber meets the road. You understand the workforce needs. Right. And I know my money is going to go much further than it would ever go at right. a, uh, a top 10 school. So uh, I'm excited to work with those folks. So uh, somebody wants to uh, uh, honor their mother, father, grandparents with a uh, with an endowment, a scholarship, a uh, student needs, wants to get a scholarship. Again, what's the website? Where I, would they physically walk into the building? How do they get to you? 
the website is www.irscfoundation.org, O-R-G. The phone number is 772-462-4786. And we are right on Virginia Avenue, the three-story building. At the top, it says Indian River State College, Edwin R. Massey <laughs> Campus. Right. We walk in there, and we are the office on the right, and we are there every day, all day. We're happy to see students. My staff is all there. Nobody's at home. You're going to be able to talk to a person. And, again, get your scholarship application in. Okay. Yeah, and it's knock fun. knock if you get there at 630 in the morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you'll – and it's lights on. You yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the only light on there in the front. Just go knock on her direct window. Yeah. Uh, so students can just can just come literally come into the office if they need help yep. with the, yep. the site. or Yeah, okay. absolutely. We're there to help. Uh, Ms. Decker, uh, again, cannot uh, say enough about what you and your team are doing for our um, – for our workforce, our young people, our high school grads, our college grads. Just really appreciate your dedication and passion for what you do. I can't say enough about our friendship. I have always appreciated uh, our friendship. Um, you you do keep me straight. There's no doubt about it. Uh, you um, make me uh, walk a tightrope, so I appreciate that too. But but again, I've appreciated the, the advice and the mentorship and uh, that you've always provided for me. So I do appreciate that. And thank you for, for coming out this evening. Well, let me just uh, take a, an opportunity here to really shout out to the community. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I do want to thank those individuals. 98% of them are silent donors. They don't want people to know that they've given. And I just want to say thank you, thank you. I have the joy of seeing the happiness on the face of the students and the faculty members who get these awards. I'm just the person that it passes through, and I'm telling you it's the greatest gift that the donors give to me is watching the joy that their their donations give to give hope and opportunity to others. So thank you, everyone out there in the community, for all that you do for our students. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, very quickly, I want, as we close in on the end of our uh, hour together this evening, I do want to talk to Katie very quickly. We've got some <laughs> incredible events coming up uh, at the SBDC. So I do want to get caught up on what we're doing. Um, I first want to, we have a, on next Tuesday, uh, November the 5th, we have a, a webinar. It's uh, all November focused, excuse me, November the, November the 10th. Yes, November the 10th, sorry. Next Tuesday, November the 10th, we have, uh, you know, I was right there in front of me. Uh, that, that's, <laughs> that's why, why I'm here. I, that's why I didn't see it, yes, because it was Are right you trying there. to run an election in <laughs> Pennsylvania or something? Uh, oh, we can't say that, Craig. <laughs> Uh, next Tuesday, November the 10th at 10 a.m., the Florida Small Business Development Center is going to partner with the Florida, um, the South Florida SBA District Office to host a, a virtual webinar event dedicated to providing current information regarding the PPP and the EID loan, EID, EIDL loan information. Talk a little bit about that event, uh, Katie. Perfect. Yep. So we are going to have um, SBA representative uh, lead lending Specialist Deb Salas, she's a great friend of ours, is going to be doing some PPP loan forgiveness tips. She's also going to talk about the EIDL, Apply and Appeal Best Practices. It's the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Um, the best way to register in advance for that one right now is on our Facebook page. You can go to the Florida SBDC at IRSC Facebook page and register. And by Friday, it will be on our website. And that's the right. IRSC Biz website. And very quickly, I, I literally talked to a couple of uh, clients today that had been denied for an EIDL. They were asking questions about the appeals process. And I said, you know what? We are literally going to touch on that. Uh, on, at, on Tuesday's uh, webinar. So mm -hmm. again, uh, PPP loan forgiveness tips, uh, how to apply for an EIDL. There are There is still, I think, billions of dollars out there in EIDL money, and I think that's with a B. I, I don't quote me on that, but there's still money there and tips on how to uh, appeal a denial. Uh, very innovative event we're going to have on Thursday, November the 19th. Uh, this is where we're going to uh, talk about Opportunity Zone. So, Katie, tell us a little bit about that event. Yep. So um, the Florida SBDC Network has partnered with Madison Street Strategies, and you are actually interviewing uh, somebody from Madison Street Strategies tomorrow for Small Biz Florida's podcast. So okay. everybody look for that podcast coming out. 
Um, we're going to have the Opportunity Zone workshop with Madison Street on November the 19th at 1 p.m. Again, you can register for that one on our Facebook page. It's Florida SBDC at IRSC. Um, or our website come tomorrow is the irscbiz.com website. Or you can always call me and I can send you the registration links. Our number is 772 336 6285. Again, that's 772 336 6285. And for both of these uh, very valuable and informative events, no cost? No cost at all. Okay. And uh, seating is somewhat limited because we're even limited, even on a virtual meeting, we are limited to so many folks. So we would suggest you get registered. Yes, register in advance. Okay. Am I missing anything? Um, not that I can think of. Okay. Just maybe a short shout out to next week's show. We're going to talk about it is November is National Career Development Month. So we're going to have Dr. Calvin Williams from Career and Transfer Services on next week okay. to talk about career development as well as John Coleman, one of our new CARES Act consultants. Okay. And Anne uh, is going to be like a regular guest. She's, yes. Yeah. I'll make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Anne, my co-host. That's right. Uh, all right, uh, Katie, uh, thank you, as always, for all you do. Thank you for your uh, producer role here. Um, Reminder of my vacation next week. Oh, my. There's no way. I'm leaving oh, you for two oh. whole days. What? How, how will we function? <laughs> how will you function? That's right. Be fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got my guest booked early, I guess, right? I do. Okay, I just said right, them good. both. All right, good. <laughs> all right, uh, so with that, we will bring to close another segment of Small Biz Florida. I want to Boy, thank. it didn't take you long to yeah, I <laughs> learn anything about this guy. So, I uh, again, I want to thank our guest this evening, uh, Miss Ann Decker, good friend, and, uh, and our executive producer, Katie Muldoon, and our marketing specialist with the Florida SBDC. So, with that, uh, we will talk to you next week on Small Biz Florida. You've been listening to Small Biz Florida on WPSL Port St. Lucie, talk of the Treasure Coast webcaster to the world, and WSTU, Stewart, serving Martin County since 1954, both stations worldwide on TuneIn, Alexa, and Google Home.